Hi, I'm Graham Blackburn, and this is Traditional Woodworking by Hand. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about different ways of sharpening things other than regular bench planes. previous episodes we've talked basically about using water stones and different kinds of Japanese stones uh, for sharpening irons that you might find in bench planes uh, like this jack plane irons that are straight across and we've demonstrated how you sharpen those by using different kinds of jigs here's one of the jigs that that we use where you put the blade in here and what the jig does is guarantee that the bevel that you put on the blade stays absolutely regular. Today we're going to be talking about some sharpening some other things and with other methods that uh, different viewers have uh, inquired about and I'm going to first of all start showing you some other things other than stones. Here's a really basic way of doing it. A piece of plate glass and you can to which you can affix different grades of wet or dry carborundum paper. That also works primarily because it's the plate glass is flat. And one of the most important things about sharpening, whether you're sharpening a straight square blade or whether you're sharpening as I'm going to show you in a bit, um, blades that you might find in molding planes and even the sharp edges of auger bits is that you don't always need to be perfectly flat sometimes you have to take into account the fact that things are curved so this is the first way of doing it uh, and its advantage is as i said before that even though when you come to sharpen curved surfaces you have to bear in mind that you can't really sharpen anything flatter than the flatness of the stone that you're using. So this is guaranteed to be flat. Here is another device that's readily available. This is also guaranteed to be perfectly flat and it has two sides that have different grits so you can do coarse sharpening on one side and fine sharpening on the other. Here is yet a third method. Uh, this is a stone and these are called bench stones and they come in different sizes and they come in different grits. Here is an example of um, bench stones. This one came out of here that come in different grades and which also are perfectly flat. So those are three other kinds of ways of, of sharpening things to guarantee that things are going to be flat. Now, when you're sharpening something that is curved, then I'll start off by showing you on, uh, on these molding planes. This is a very, very old, over 200 year old molding beading plane. Uh, and the secret, whether it's a simple beading plane or whether it's a more complicated OG plane where you can see the blade does all kinds of things, is that the first thing to do is to establish that the blade itself, properly called the iron in woodworking parlance, matches the sole of the plane. So the way to do that, whether it's a very small plane like this or whether it's a much larger plane like this, is to, with a little hammer, is to tap gently the iron so that it protrudes a little bit over the sole, if you take a look at this here. And you might want to make sure that the profile of the iron perfectly matches the profile of the sole itself and the way to do that and in this one is already in pretty good shape but the way to do that 
is to tap the iron so that it sticks out and then take either a very sharp um, sharpie pen for example or you can even do it with a scratch hole and is to trace the profile of the sole on the back of the iron right then when you remove the iron and i think most of you remember how to do that the easiest way to remove the iron is to put the wedge in the vise and then using your mallet to tap the plane off Oops, a bit more, a little tighter. Mm. Oops, loosen the vice a bit. Now you take out the wedge and you take out the iron and you can look at the back of the iron, where which I didn't actually scratch here, and you should be able to see the mark that you made by tracing the sole of the plane on the iron. Then it's just a question of filing this edge down to the line that marks the profile of the sole. Don't try and do it the other way around. Resist the temptation of adjusting the sole of the plane to the iron. It's always invariably better to make the iron match the plane. Assuming that we have a line here, then you need to resort to a whole bunch of files to file that down. And I have here a whole selection of files. These are round files. And here is another uh, selection of files. Some of these are rasps, but it's possible to find files. Here, here are files here. And here's another box of files. It's possible to find files that match the profile. And its sharpening starts by simply taking a file and filing down to whatever line that you scribed on the back of the iron. At that point, all you need to do is to turn the blade over. And now with a, typically a broader, bigger file is to file this down until you get a pretty close edge and you need to make sure that you're keeping the bevel pretty much the same width all the way across. The next thing is true for almost every sharpening uh, item that you're working on is to keep the back of the iron perfectly flat. So if I had in fact filed this profile to match the back of the plane, the first thing that I would do would be to put the file on whatever sharpening stone I wanted and make sure that the back of the iron was perfectly flat. If I have indeed filed that down to match the line, and if I have indeed, by using different kinds of files, uh, made the bevel equal, that's all you have to do because the sharpening edge bit that does the cutting is actually simply where the back intersects with the front. Now, besides from metal files, I want to point out something else, which is that there are available a huge selection of shaped stones. Up to now, we've only talked about the flat, big sharpening stones, but over here, you can see that I have a really nice collection of different shaped stones. And the trick is to find one that's closest to the shape that you want there and use this to sharpen that. Um, I have over here two more that I use. And by the way, just like the sharpening stones used for flat blades, these little stones also come in a variety of hardnesses. So here is a nice white Arkansas stone. Here is something that's a little coarser and you just work your way up. So having explained the principle, let's see if we can actually sharpen one of these. 
And let's start with uh, one of my oldest planes. This is a plane that was made in 1736. I think I've shown this before. Uh, take the iron out by putting the wedge in the vise and tap the plane off the wedge. Don't do it the other way around. Otherwise, you'll break the wedge. And now we can sight along here and we can see that, in fact, the shape of the cutting edge does, in fact, pretty closely match the shape of the sole of the plane. This is a very small plane. So if it didn't and I needed to adjust it, I would need to look for one of my smallest little files, perhaps this file here. And you can see how this will fit in there very nicely. And remember that the file, if you hold it straight, will give you one circumference. But if you twist it a little bit, you can actually increase the diameter of the curve that you're sharpening. Having got that down to the rough shape, then I would look for one of these stones that fitted, perhaps this one here. And most of these come with two edges. And I could sharpen like this. Once I'd got the inside part perfectly matching the sole of the plane, then as I said before, it becomes very simple. Whether I'm using any of these other devices or whether I'm using a Japanese stone or a Japanese water stone, all I need to do is to sharpen the back of the iron. If you go looking for antique tools, one way to tell that it's been used properly and it's worth it is to, if you can, take the iron out and examine the back of the iron. If you see that the back of the iron is nice and shiny, you'll know that the person who used it before knew what they were talking about and totally understood the fact that you keep this flat and the sharpening edge is just a matter of how well this matches the profile of the plane. I want to show you one last thing about sharpening, and that is not everything is a curved plane iron. Here is an auger bit, and we haven't spent much time on boring, which is the proper woodworking term for drilling, but nevertheless, these tools need to be sharpened too. And auger bits have two cutting edges. They have, first of all, they have a lead screw that pulls the tool into the wood. And then at the side, they have two pieces that describe the outside of the circle. And these need to be sharpened only on the inside, because if you sharpen them on the outside, you're changing the diameter of the screw. And then when you've sharpened the inside of the outside perimeter cutting edges, then all you need to do is to sharpen the actual cutting edges. And there are two, one on each side. And this requires a special tool. And here is an example of one. And this is a tool and sometimes they're sold as auger bit sharpening tools. But what's unique about this is basically just a file. What's unique about this is that on one side, you have a flat surface that you can use for filing. On the other end, you have something that has no grooves. It's called the safe side. Similarly, the same thing is true for the edge. One edge is very narrow and has, can be used as a file. And the other edge has no file filings in there and is the safe edge. So this is the tool that you would use to sharpen this. And you could use that for the side there. So one of these is extremely useful for when you're sharpening things that are not curved plain irons. So I hope that helps. There's a lot more about sharpening that we'll deal with in the future as we go along. But I just wanted to give you a brief introduction to how to sharpen things other 
than straight ahead square irons. If you like that, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And by all means, keep sending in comments and questions and I'll do my best to answer and maybe even demonstrate some of the things. Uh, and enjoy woodworking without electricity and plastic.